When this boat was built, it came with a high-tech 7 8 sail track with brass slides on it, which has worked pretty well for how many years now? 40, 55, 55 this. 55 years. Um, year. Very high-tech at the time, because prior to that, it was like wooden hoops that went around the mast. So aluminum mast with the stainless steel track is pretty fancy. We're on our like third set of slides at this point and the track is starting to get a little worn and it's made of several pieces that are butted together and where they're butted together they don't line up perfectly anymore and I've done my best to file it a little bit but the slides hang up a little bit so on this boat we can't raise or lower the main unless we're like within like 10 degrees of the wind probably even closer than that probably closer to five degrees which is fine for lake sailing and coastal stuff but we really want to be able to lower or reef the main in conditions not straight into the wind there's a couple different options for sail tracks we could always get a new track and re-rivet it onto the mast and go with brass slugs or plastic slugs <clears throat> the other option is to go with like a roller track and ball bearing cars which would cost more than this boat <laughs> and then the third option is to go with the Tides Marine track, which slides over the existing track. A plastic track with stainless steel slides that slide up and down very easily inside. It's almost as good as the ball bearing system at like a fraction of the cost. And for boats this size, it makes a heck of a lot of sense. When we ordered our new sails, we also ordered a new track system to go with it. I measured the old track, gave them the dimensions, and they machined up a plastic track, which will slide up the mast. The kit included this short section of track that you raise up on a halyard to make sure the track doesn't get hung up anywhere. To get the space required to slide the track up the mast, we first had to remove the mainsail, boom, and gooseneck track. Next, we test fit the track on the mast and use binoculars to see how much we needed to cut off to provide clearance to the halyard pulley. In our case, we needed to remove about two inches. We cut the track to length and recreated the chamfer using a handsaw, but you can cut it in a variety of ways. After re-drilling the hole for the stop pin on the track, we reinstalled it for the final time. Secured the bottom of the track with a screw and reinstalled the gooseneck track and boom. The final step is installing the slugs and the sail. If you have an existing sail, you need to either cut off the old slugs or sew on a new loop. The slugs attached to the sail, which ours was um, specially made with these loops for it. Bottom of the track, there's this opening where the slugs can come in. And there's slightly bigger slugs that go at the reading. And you want to put the slugs on so the ring is at the bottom, so if it pops off, it, the pin doesn't fly out. Okay. 
And that's the last one. Then they have this stop gate. Goes on the bottom. There's a pin to keep it right place. This has made an incredible difference. The sail slides easily up and down the track, even off the wind. Next time we start exploring Florida's Gulf Coast. Thanks for watching.